All right, our rib structure is free from the mold, and I'm really glad I cut it out. It had gotten tightly stuck in just two little areas, um, even with a relief cut to kind of flex it out. Uh, it made me kind of nervous. I don't want to have to flex too much. Um, this rib structure, our fluffy little rib structure, is nice and flexible. You can see how limber it is, so you can bend it out of the mold, right? Um, and it can move a little bit, uh, but it was not moving enough in my comfort zone. So let's uh, let's clean all this up now, so you can see all the work I got to do. I still have separation tape here. I got to take out. I'm gonna chisel out these little corners and then uh, clean them up. Yeah, and then we get to move on to assembly, but something else first. finish printing on the inside of Leo's violin. So I put the state map of the coastline of Washington from a really old map, the oldest one I could find, um, which have all of its rivers and borders. And along here we have the state bird, which is a goldfinch, and then a marmot down here hanging out. I thought he looked pretty cool. Um, but I want to do something special on the inside. I want the outside to be traditional and kind of plain. Um, but the inside is kind of nice for a few reasons. One, no one's ever going to see it except for you guys, um, really, because once it's sealed up, you're not going to see this unless a luthier down the way has to crack it apart for some reason. Um, and I kind of like that. It's some little like sneak peek gift inside. So when you look through the F holes, you're going to see the map and the labels, um, but you may not see a lot of this. So it's kind of nice just to see it now. So the maple is darker than the spruce, which I have right here. Um, just because of the tone of the wood, obviously. And so, I'll show you guys the front. So that was the back, and this is the top, um, which is a really, really old, one of the oldest maps I could find of Kentucky, with all of its rivers and borders. And then also a cardinal, which is our state bird, and a little chipmunk, because me and my family love chipmunks. We have some that live out on our little property. So, that's the back. I'll get some detailed shots that you guys can uh, look in on. But I'm pretty excited about it once it's all closed up. Nobody will see these pretty much ever again, but it'll be a nice little companion piece inside there, Kentucky and Washington State. Every time I try to whisper, it won't get through. I'm hoping that we get through. Once the furniture with the 
vacation. Now I want love, not domestic complacence. The future is great, I'm not being a race. Very cheap one, and we're talking a race. Now there's parallel lines through the bathroom blinds as I share my mind to a friend of mine. Smell of the stove as I listen close in our dirt. If you can hear it on camera, here is the uh, top. You can hear the different tones if I hold it in different spots. So those are the three main spots that I tune. And it's really responsive, so I think it's gonna sound good. Um, but this will be the last time that anyone, unless a luthier opens up these things, uh, will see the insides. So, enjoy that. Um, got my labels in here. And uh, normally these labels are switched. The name is normally on the, the treble side over here. Uh, so when you peek through the F holes, you can read it. But, um, in my scenario, I put a little information label, and then the bass, the uh, Sound post ends up hitting that. So I just reverse them. Uh, my name is also in the top. So it's about ready for glue up. Um, I'm gonna take one last look around the edges and make sure everything's good and clean. And then this fella will go there and we can glue it up. All right, she's out of the clamps. Really loud already. It's gonna sound good. Uh, but the next thing we got is to attach our neck. So I need to cut a slot for the neck to fit into and to work on, but it's starting to look like something, which is great. So there's our top and our back. You can already see it's gonna be a violin, big surprise. All right, so uh, I'm gonna set a center line, which I already have on my neck, to match up here, and start scribing out and cutting the joint that connects the two permanently. Come to people. 
There we go. I have a little more fit up to do, um, but the joint holds on its own. Looks good. All right, we got the neck fit in. Check that out. So what started as a giant stack of wood is now set to look like a fiddle or violin. Um, I have a lot more cleanup to do on the neck. Got a rough profile, but I need to shape um, everything down here uh, on the heel and the button. Um, but I also need to do a final fit up uh, and check for my last dimension on length to make sure that from the nut to the bridge and the brake angle is correct. Um, once I get that, I can set it at its final depth. But the joint right now, I mean, it's holding on its own. There's no glue, there's no nothing in there. Um, we can crack that out. Uh, but that's what you want. You want that nice tight fit. Um, but yeah, we're moving right along. All right, so the neck back out before I glue it up or do anything else, um, after all the cleanup, uh, the next step I love to do is I gotta make an in pin hole down here. So the in pin is the piece that holds the tail gut, that holds the tail piece, uh, that holds the strings in tension. Um, I also have to cut a spot for the saddle, which is the piece that the tail gut runs over, right, to protect it from breaking this. It's a hard piece of ebony. Um, but I always like the in pin hole. I always like putting that in there because it gives you the one time opportunity to look into the whole violin, which I'm excited about on this one because of the images inside. So uh, we'll drill a hole and start to taper it, but not get it to its final dimension until um, we're close to final assembly. All right, so we're moving right along. Y'all can check this out. So this is the first layer of sealing shellac that will be under all of that finish. So I got the scroll all wrapped up and pretty. Nice cherry stuff, the cherry sides, right? And this stuff will darken pretty quickly um, through some of this process. Now I'm not gonna show all the finishing process stuff, um, not just because it's what I do, but mainly because it's kind of boring. So um, anyways, this will take on a coat of this, a coat of something called garbage, uh, which is a yellowing agent on here. Um, and then I will actually tone the actual wood and then start the final finish of varnish or shellac that I'll then reveal the color underneath all of this. So it's a multi-layer color kind of process. Anyhow, but I think it's looking pretty sharp. Um, so we'll skip forward a little bit here. Um, and I'll show you as we go uh, the finished stuff coming up soon. All right, so I thought I'd take a second and show. I got the pegs in there. Now, once I get the finish, finish work done, all of it done, I'll do the final reaming to get them to their exact position. Uh, but this gets them all set and they're labeled so they are exactly where they need to be. Um, but I want to take a second to talk about the finish on this violin. Now, Traditionally, uh, this is how it's done. I would do these layers of colorants and then the actual varnish. Uh, what I normally do is a little different because I usually make more artistic based instruments or different instruments. I obviously make traditional ones as well, um, but for the most part, the ones that I make are a little more unique in terms of their color. And to preserve that color, I use a very, very highly polished or highly refined French polish technique with a very, very clean shellac. Um, 
And so I will actually use the natural color of the wood with a French polish on top um, with some oil to pull the natural tannins of the wood to the surface. Now, um, but in this case, what I'm doing is that shellac sealant and then a coloring technique to get the color that looks more like a traditional fiddle or violin. And then this will be finished with a varnish, um, unlike traditional uh, shellac finish that I use. So uh, lots of ways of finishing these instruments. They're are tons of different ways. Uh, these are just the ways that I do it, a very traditional way, and then more of a contemporary uh, aesthetic way. So um, we'll get forward moving. I'll let this totally cure, and then I'll move on to the next color layer. I need you 